Well, I think the NHS can learn a lot from reform in other public services. I mean, we are all facing the same context, which is trying to achieve better performance with fewer resources. So it's a common challenge and we're all going about it the same way, I think, which is to say, how can we achieve our outcomes in a better way? And this, this probably isn't so much about incremental change, it's about quite transformation, transformational change. So for example, I think a lot of it is about prevention rather than cure. So for example, in the criminal service, we actually want to stop people getting into prison. Once they've gone to prison, we want to stop them reoffending when they come out. Similarly with the health service, I'd say, let's just stop people going to hospital. That's going to be a really big plus. If they happen to have gone to hospital, let's stop turning them into what the Singaporeans call frequent flyers by actually going back to their homes and looking at the circumstances which, which lead them to end up going back more and more times and say, are there some changes we can make there? So I think it's that whole thing about behavior change, it's about prevention, and it's about when, when it comes to cure, thinking about cures which actually work in the sense of improve the well-being and independence of that patient and ensure that they are sustainably cured, if you like, that we're not bringing them back into the system time and time again. I don't use the word market because when I think of market, the economist in me thinks of a world where everything is priced. That's what we think of as markets and supply and demand and there's a price which equilibrates the two. The whole principle of the NHS, free at the point of delivery, you know, we don't use prices in the same way. So it, it might be a quasi market at some point, but it's not like markets in other terms. And I think we all know from, for example, the whole business about blood doning that actually market principles applied kind of in a, in a thoughtless way to the health service can come up with the wrong answers. On the other hand, we do want to try and get some of the benefits of markets. You know, we'd like there to be a raising of standards which competition tends to give you in a world where we don't like some of the consequences of, of markets and competitions which are often failure and, and people going bankrupt and those sorts of things. So we're trying to get the best of both worlds and we're trying to get a regulated system which achieves that. I don't think it will ever be possible to take the politics out because health ultimately is going to be about uh, allocation of scarce resources, right? We are never going to be able to spend as much as we would all like to on health because that would completely absorb more than the whole of the economy. And we know that as countries get richer, they tend to want to spend more on health. And we also know that as they get richer and they spend more on health, you get diminishing returns. You know, it's not that it gets better and better. You know, US spends a vast proportion on health and doesn't deliver uh, that much better outcomes, certainly worse outcomes for some groups within that society. So. Yes, there's going to be politics there because there are some really tough choices to be made. And this is about choices of taxpayer money if we're not going to do it through prices. And for good reasons, we're not going to do it that way. So, uh, yes, it is about the essence of politics. It's about distribution. It's about what we should care about. On the other hand, you know, there are certain technical issues where you'd want the technical experts to be deciding, just like in monetary policy, we decided that technical experts at the Bank of England and the Monetary Policy Committee would decide on interest rates. So there are technical aspects in health where, yes, you know, I, I want, if I were a cancer patient, my cancer treatment to be sorted out by technical experts, not by politicians, thank you very much. However, there is a political dimension to the overall size of things, as I explained. So I don't think we will ever take the politics out. I don't think we should ever take the politics out. But there are certain aspects where we need the technical experts to deliver the right answers. Well, I think for them, it should be about we can deliver something that's really important to you. We can actually improve communities and society by improving the well-being of people within those societies. And actually, if people see that parts of government are delivering and society is getting better and their individual lives are getting better, then they will reward politicians in the sense of uh, re-electing them. And I think that feedback mechanism is a hugely important part of democracy.
Well, I think we have to face the reality of the, of, of the world we'll be in, which will be ever greater demands on the health service, because as we live longer, uh, it, it's fairly clear from all the evidence we've got so far that people want to spend more on their health. They are going to be living longer, so that's going to have its own implications for in terms of what we spend. Uh, so we need to devote more time to saying, can we get people to have behaviours which, which result in fewer and less expensive interactions with the health service, so individuals are making their own decisions in the right way. The kinds of interactions we have from a health point of view, can we find ways to make them more efficient and more sustainable? So when we do treat people, can we find ways to treat them that mean that we've done it once and that we're not having to do something which means they're forever on a drugs regime or forever having come to come back into hospital? So I think sustainability in that sense is going to be really important. And I think throughout this, we should think about the people who are part of the health service, the training they get, the, the, the understanding of how they can deliver a sustainable health force. And I think for that, one change I would say is we need to think a lot more about mental health issues rather than physical health issues. That's going to be important for the future because I think they're going to be a growing burden potentially on society. Uh, so if we can get an engaged, really committed health force, and we have one already, that can be committed to delivering a sustainable health system and convincing people of the kinds of behaviours that are consistent with that, then I think we'll have a great success.